program. You are here because you have chosen to attend the topic, the Pintanim Challenge, Food Sustainability Through Urban Gardening. My name is Nika Isabel Nazarena, and I will be your host for this ACP session. You are please requested to be in the Zoom room until the end of the activity. While on Zoom, you are kindly reminded to observe proper netiquette, remain muted for the entire talk proper of the webinar to avoid distracting the speaker and your fellow participants. Although not required, we also encourage you to open your cameras for the duration of the webinar. But if you cannot do this because of unstable internet connection, we understand. Finally, may we ask you to please make sure that your Zoom names are your real names for attendance checking. Let me share with you the schedules of today's ACP webinar. There will be two parts. The first part is the talk of the resource speaker, while the second part is the open forum. If you have any questions or comments relative to the presentation of the speaker or the topic, please post them on the Zoom chat or the Add New Asa Facebook comment section. Please state your name, the school or organization you represent, and your brief questions or comments. Later, during the open forum, we will address them through the speaker. We will not entertain unrelated and offensive posts, so let us all be respectful. E-certificates will be given to those who will finish the entire webinar and accomplish the evaluation form. We will provide the link for the evaluation at the end of this ACP webinar. To start the program, may we now request everyone to settle down and feel the presence of the Lord for the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
choir for leading us in that heartwarming prayer. Now, to formally welcome all of us in this ACP offering, we have with us the University President, Father Roberto Ezequiel N. Rivera of the Society of Jesus. My dear friends, our dear students, a good day to everyone. Just Marhail na Aldo po sa Saindu Gabos. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to welcome all of you to the Alternative Class Program 2021. We can argue that during this pandemic, we are in a sense already going through alternative classes with our inability to meet face-to-face uh, -face, with a lot of the learning and instruction happening online. But my dear friends, I believe the alternative class program reminds us that in the midst of this pandemic and all the terrible uh, sufferings that this crisis has caused, our education should not only continue, it should also flourish and contribute to your total formation. And that is why I am extremely happy that for our alternative class program this year, we have the theme uh, Imagis Nation, striving for a better normal. In striving for this better normal, we are guided by the four apostolic preferences of the Society of Jesus. That is, uh, these preferences of showing the way to God through the spiritual exercises, of journeying with the poor, accompanying with the youth, and caring for our common home, the earth, the environment. Using these apostolic preferences as a guidepost, I believe this alternative class program will truly provide us opportunities to go beyond the classroom or even the virtual classroom in order to fire up our Imagis nation and to see the possibilities for a human existence and human development in the midst and beyond the pandemic that we are experiencing. My sincerest thanks, most especially to the Office of Student Affairs for organizing the very impressive lineup of talks during this alternative class program. My sincerest thanks as well to all our resource speakers. My wish for all of you is that these alternative class program offerings will be an opportunity for you to truly learn and deepen your understanding of your responsibilities as men and women for others. Again, thank you very much to everyone. Salamat po, asin, Dios mabalos. Salamat, Father Robert, for your presence and welcoming message. Many of you may have taken part in ACP activities during the old normal, while the others, especially the first-year students, are attending the ACP for the first, first time and via, the, via this online platform. So you may ask, what is ACP all about? Why are we conducting this program even in this pandemic? To know more about ACP, please watch this video. Hello Atomians, welcome to your Alternative Class Program, or ACP. I am Jeka Bandia Odal, your OPA, or Online Public Address Announcer, for the ACP. Here is what you need to know about ACP. The ACP is one concrete expression of the Ignatian Formation Program and a major student activity. It is conducted every semester to provide college students 
with formative topics or activities outside of their regular classroom routine and daily schedule in support of the university's uniquely Jesuit educational goals. Instead of attending their classes for the day, students choose at least one topic or activity from among the offerings during the ACP day. Carefully selected resource speakers from different fields of specialization are invited to share their knowledge, skills, and inspire students to nurture their personal development, pursue their aspirations, and partake in social advocacies or causes. You may have missed your ACP last semester and the organizers may not be able to implement a face-to-face -face ACP at this time and until the situation permits us to return to the campus and our classrooms, but ASA and its partners are confident that their experience in delivering formation programs and student services via online platforms and the support of the university community shall help in still providing a truly formative ACP experience to students in the new setting. This semester's ACP is designed to make use of available platforms like Zoom, Google Meet, and social media streaming features. Hence, health safety protocols are observed and access of students is assured. The theme hashtag better normal activate your imagination is a call for us to break from the so-called old normal and to activate our creative imagination to understand not only our personal contacts but also our social situations and to come up with new and better ways of living in the pandemic despite the limitations. It is a challenge to do action on how we the Athenians can create a better environment for us and the larger society outside the gates of the university or, shall I say, outside our online classrooms. The Better Normal channels the Ignatian concept of magis, discerning to do the greater good in new channels and media and by doing acts of service and love for God and for the nation. The ACP thus aims that the students are able to first, acquire knowledge and or skills that are relevant to one's interest, talent, skills, passion, and advocacy. Next, relate or share the learning and insight gained from the topic or activity in conversation or dialogue and personal reflection. Next, Examine the importance of one's interest, talent, skill, passion, advocacy to the development of the society and seek ways or opportunities by which the gain or enhanced knowledge or skills can be further advanced and used for the benefit of the immediate organization or community or larger society. Listen, understand, discern, share, act. I hope that we will all take to heart our engagement in the ACP. Don't forget to learn and have fun while we experience ACP. That's it, Ian's. now understand the background, objectives, and the theme of this semester's ACP. Hopefully, at the end of this activity, ACP would have a positive impact on our continuing formation in the university. At this point, allow me to introduce to you our resource speaker. Our speaker for this afternoon is a registered environmental or urban planner and a licensed agriculturist. He is the chairperson of the Agribusiness Department of the Cotabato City State Polytechnic College and one of the Board of Directors of Education Network Philippines. He is a research consultant for several studies and survey conducted by Save the, Save the Children Philippines, Islamic Relief Philippines, 
BARMM, Ministry of Labor and Employment, and British Council and Kadtabanga Foundation. In 2008, he earned his degree in Bachelor of Science in Agribusiness Management at Mindanao State University. In the same university, he finished his master's degree in Farming System in 2014 and Sustainable Development Studies in 2018. Currently, he is taking up his doctorate degree in Sustainable Development Studies with specialization in Sustainable Economic Development. He is the founder of the Tipid Tanim Challenge, an advocacy started during the pandemic with the goal of encouraging households to do home gardening to promote food self-sufficiency. Let us all welcome Mr. Nasruddin Boisan. Uh, magandang hapon po sa ating mga participants and facilitators ng Alternative Plus program. First, we are very happy to be invited by the Ateneo Dinaga University, particularly the Office of Student Affairs. Uh, maraming salamat po sa chance to present the advocacy of the Titanic Challenge and uh, of course its implications sa uh, ating komunidad, media at individual and how the Tipitan Challenge advoca advocacy helps the problem on food security. So this time, ang pag-uusapan natin is uh, the Tipitan Challenge, the Food Sustainability through Urban Gardening. But uh, my discussion would be more on um, how the Tipitan Challenge works and uh, not more on the actual gardening, though, the, though there are some tips kung paano ito ginagawa. But mostly ang discussion natin for today is uh, paano gawin, paano pinalaganap ang Tipitan Challenge and basically paano din ang ating mga kabataan, mga students na kagayon ninyo ay paano gawin, palaganapin ang ating advocacy. As you understand, the coronavirus uh, pandemic Coronavirus was the problem of coronavirus was uh, declared as pandemic by the World Health Organization. And dahil uh, doon ang Pilipinas din ay nagkaroon ng lockdown in response to that. At ang nagkaroon na rin ng mga community restrictions, kanya-kanyang declarations about uh, LGU, and it caused a lot of problems sa mga uh, komunidad, sa individuals, family, uh, lalo na dun sa access sa food. And because also of this uh, lockdown, there are some countries and there are some uh, um, geographical areas na mayroong declaration ng holding or limited na ang kanilang pagsusupply ng pagkain. For example, in Kidnon, there were some news na they are holding the rice uh, temporarily para ma-assess yung kanilang food supply and uh, as, as basis na rin, kung magpapalabas sila ng kanilang uh, rice. And there were a threat of hunger as uh, as uh, said by the uh, Department of Agriculture uh, Chief. At ito ay uh, sinasabi nilang maliban sa health crisis, ang problema ng COVID-19 ay also economic crisis. And of course, uh, uh, lumabas din sa balita na the Vietnam will halt their supply or their exports to ensure primarily yung kanilang food security, local food security. So dahil dito, naisip ng mga advocates ng Tipitanim Challenge na kung ito ay magtatagal, makakaroon ng supply ng pagkain, makakaroon ng uh, 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 limited supply ng pagkain sa Pilipinas. At yun na nga, uh, nakita natin na maraming mga pagkain na nasasayang, hindi na ipapasok o hindi dumarating sa mga consumers. Tawa ito ng mga uh, restrictions na pinatupad na uh, primarily upang maiwasan ang spread ng virus. But uh, kasabay ng problema ng health crisis ay malaking problema din yung usapin ng food security. Marami na, maraming mga kababayan natin na nakakaroon ng problema ng supply ng pagkain, uh, walang sapat na uh, pera para bumili ng pagkain, and these are all related to food security. 
At yan din ang dahilan kung bakit nagkaroon ng tipid tanim challenge. Basically, ang tipid tanim challenge na advocacy ay uh, galing sa daw dalawang salita, tipid and tanim. So we want the households to reduce the food consumption. Second is to be involved in local food production. Mas mahalaga pala ang papel ng local food production sa panahon ng pandemya. So hindi natin kailangan dapat umasa sa supply externally dahil kung magkakaroon ng matinding lockdown pala ay mas aasa tayo sa supply individually. Uh, I mean supply ng uh, local producers. So even supplier na malapit sa atin, minsan nakakaroon din ng problema. And that is why we, we wanted to involve the households sa production ng pagkain. Sa reduction or sa TTP and of course sa production of food. As you understand in this graph, uh, kung ang, ang straight line na ito na red and green, yan yung, yung usual consumption, yan yung uh, usual demand and price natin. But if we reduce the uh, the demand, for example, in this uh, blue line, this blue line, kung we reduce natin ang consumption, and at the same time, i-increase natin ang production, this uh, purple line, ang mangyayari ay magkakaroon ng um, additional production of food. Kung makikita ninyo, from here na ang, ang quantity na naproduce natin is 7, Kung mag -re reduce tayo ng consumption and at the same time mag-increase ng production, pagaya ng participation ng mga households, mag-i-increase ang quantity available sa ating mga kabahayan or sa lokalidad. And at the same time, yung production price or yung market price natin ay bababa from 55 pesos, for example, sa, sa Ampalaya. Dahil nag-reduce tayo ng consumption at in-increase natin yung production, may possibility na bababa yung price from 55 at posibleng bababa ito sa 47. At yun na nga, with the reduction of uh, food consumption and increasing of uh, food production, ang nangyayari sa, sa price ay bumababa at nare-reduce natin yung inflation rate. At alam natin na pag-reduce uh, pag ang inflation rate, tumataas ang ating uh, position power. At uh, makita din natin na because there is availability of food, na, napipi, napipigilan natin yung possible na pagtaas ng presyo, which is hindi lang yung sarili natin ang natutulungan, kundi yung mga kasama natin, mga kapitbahay natin na mas mahirap, na dahil mababa ang presyo ay mas marami silang nabibiling na pagkain. So with, with tipid na yung challenge, naiiwasan natin yung uh, uh, malaking inflation rate and uh, possible um, unavailability of As you can see in the uh, the uh, economic performance of the Philippine Statistics, this was uh, actually uh, published by NEDA and the Philippine Statistics Authority. Nung kasagsagan ng lockdown last year, second part of 2020, ang nag-increase lang ng, ng growth rate ay ang agriculture, agriculture, fisheries, and forestry. The rest, industry services ay bumaba. So, may, may effect ang, ang production natin doon sa growth. We are currently having some technical difficulties, so kindly wait for our team to fix that, Po. Meanwhile, um, please...
Ayan po, we are having some technical difficult difficulty but we are currently fixing it na po. So, meanwhile, may we ask you to please make sure, reminder po to make sure that your Zoom names are your real names for attendance checking and I hope you are all okay and safe, everyone. We are now on the week four of our ACP, ACP or Alternative Class Program. Uh, sa pag-increase ng gross domestic product. And this is actually how the Tipitanim Challenge works. Uh, of course, there are some individuals, there are governments, uh, for example, the National Youth Commission, the Department of Agriculture, local government units, and uh, the some uh, Sangguniang Kabataan and NGOs na uh, nag-ipon-ipon, nag-advocate, nag-provide uh, nag ng mga funds, provide ng seats, and There, ayan po, we are currently fixing the technical okay. problems. As you can see in the uh, the uh, economic performance of the Philippine visit, this was uh, actually uh, published by NEDA and the Philippine Statistics Authority. Nung kasagsagan ng lockdown last year, second part of 2020, ang nag-increase lang ng, ng growth rate ay ang agriculture, agriculture, fisheries, and forestry. The rest, industry services, ay bumaba. So, may, may effect ang, ang production natin doon sa growth rate ng ating gross domestic product. So, uh, if, there, if more Filipinos are actually involved in production, at least in some way ay nakakatulong tayo in general doon sa, uh, sa pag-increase ng gross domestic product. And this is actually how the Tipitanim Challenge works. Uh, of course, there are some individuals to our government, uh, for example, the National Youth Commission, the Department of Agriculture, local government units, and uh, the some uh, Sangguniang Kabataan and NGOs, na uh, nag-ipon-ipon, nag-advocate, nag-provide uh, nag ng mga funds, provide ng seats, and these and these uh, contributions were provided sa Tipitanim Challenge and the Tita C ang tinatawag namin, Tipitanim Challenge, ay supported by media, the academe, and different advocates and different organizations. At ang seats na binibigay ng ating mga supporters ay nilalagay natin sa pick-up points at ang pick-up points uh, doon kumukuha yung ating mga gardeners. Uh, sa, sa panahong ito ay napakalimited ng movement. Halos walang taong pwedeng lumabas. Maalala ko nung bumibili kami ng seats, uh, halos ako lang yung tao sa kalsada, then uh, niriripak natin yung seats na, na bibili natin, na bigay ng ating mga donors, niriripak natin into three kinds, four kinds, may, mamaya may kita niyo yung ating mga seats, niriripak natin yun at nilalagay sa mga pick-up points. Ang pick-up points na ito ay uh, mga kaibigan din natin na nag-volunteer na sab sasabi ay, oy lagyan nyo ng pick-up point dito kasi maraming gusto magtanim. So, nilalagay lang natin doon at hinahayaan natin yung mga gardeners na pumunta doon at mag-pick up. So, hindi, ang tipitanim challenge ay hindi voluntarily namimigay ng seats, for example, house to house or individually 
kundi ang mga guard generations mo, mga nagtatanim ang pupunta sa mga pickup points. Bakit gano'n ang aming idea? First, um, kung bakit may pickup point kami ay uh, napaka-stricto ng otoridad sa panahon na yan. Hindi pwede na magsama-sama sa isang lugar o kaya may mga pickup point tayo. So doon pumupunta yung mga uh, takers at kumukuha ng seed. Secondly, ang assumption natin is kapag ang taker na yan ay pumunta sa pickup point at pinick up ang seeds natin, hindi sabihin interesado. Marami tayong cases bilang uh, bilang development worker na kapag tayo ay namimigay directly sa mga farmers, ay kadalasan na hindi nila tinatanim ito dahil hindi mo pa nabubuo dun yung kanilang motivation to to actually uh, plant the, uh, the seeds. Pero pag ang uh, takers natin mismo ang pumunta sa pickup point, ibig sabihin, Interesado, interesado ito. So ito, this is how the Tipid Tanim Challenge works. Itong proseso lamang, yung individual government and non-government organization, sila yung nagbibigay ng seeds, sila yung nagbibigay ng funds, then yung Tipid Tanim Challenge being supported by academic media. Ang academic nagiging papel nito ay sila yung nagpuprovide ng mga online conversations. So yung media, sila din yung tumutulang sa atin na ipakalat yung ating advocacy sa radio, sa even sa uh, bloggers ay iniinvitahan tayo para uh, ipalabas o uh, marami pang makalam sa ating advocacy. Then, some advocates, dito yung mga kaibigan natin. Ang advocates na ito ay sila din yung mga takers, minsan, at pagtanim nila ng kanilang mga gulay, sila din mismo yung nag upload at nagiging advocates na rin sila. And of course, there are some organizations na tumutulong sa atin. Then, uh, mayroong pick-up points. Uh, nung last na check natin, there are more than 30 pick-up points sa uh, buong Mindanao. At dito sa Maguindanao lamang ay uh, napakarami na rin yung pick-up points. So, bago dumarating sa ating mga gardeners. Ang mga gardeners na ito, sila din ay na nagiging mga advocates na rin. Pag in-upload nila yung kanilang uh, mga gardens ay nakakaikayot din nila sila ng mga kapitbahay, ng kanilang mga kaibigan. Kaya uh, talagang lumaki, lumawak yung uh, ating advocacy. Ibang strategies natin, of course, yung sinabi ko kanina, yung kan mayroong online gardening conversations. Noong mga panahon na yan, nung start ng uh, COVID-19, hindi pa masyado uso ang webinar. Hindi pa masyado uso yung mga online seminar. Kaya ang ginagawa natin is online uh, gardening conversations. Uh, conversations lang din ang turn natin dahil hindi din kasi pwede yung live. Dahil alam nyo naman dito sa Mindanao, particularly sa Maguindanao ay merong problema sa internet na minsan nahihirapan mag-access yung ating mga takers. So ang ginagawa natin, conversations, ang platform lang, lamang natin ay Facebook kung saan nag-aalat tayo ng panahon na pwedeng magtanong ang mga takers at, at uh, nag-iimbita tayo ng mga uh, agriculturist, mga kaibigan natin sa academy at sila yung nag-explain ng mga katanungan ng mga uh, takers. Then, mayroong online consultation, hal halos 24 hours ito nung, nung kasagsagan ng pandemya. Then, we provide also learning materials. And after medyo lumuwag yung, yung uh, lockdown, ay nagkaroon tayo ng mga compacted visit Tinignan natin yung mga garden na nakikita natin sa Facebook. Ang kagandahan ng Tipid Tanim Challenge ay nalaman ng mga tao kung ano ang Tita C at ang ating monitoring, uh, nalaman nila through social media and of course ang ating monitoring ay ginawa din natin through social media. Sila na mismo ang nag upload ng kanilang mga activities at nakakatuwang pagmasdan na hanggang basilan, hanggang tawi-tawi, umabot yung ating mga Tita C papers. Ito yung mga kuha natin sa mga backyard visit. Uh, kung may kita nyo, even mga sundalo ay nagtanim sila. At sabi, kasi nung kasagsagan na yon ay umiiwas din sila na uh, magkaroon ng infection. So, minabuti nilang magtanim sa kanilang uh, kampo. Kung may kita nyo, napakaganda nung, uh, nung isang opisyal sa parang maginanaw. So, pumunta din tayo sa mga garden ng ating mga LGUs. May mga takers tayo ng mga LGUs. Uh, actually, sila din yung mga supporter natin. At ito yung ating seeds. Kung makikita nyo, we have established more than 30 pick-up points in Mindanao. So, ito yung seeds natin. We have pechay, we have uh, uh, mongo, we have okra, we have uh, uh, 
uh, cucumber. Kung makikita nyo yung combination ng seeds natin ay combination ng uh, seeds na uh, short term, mabilis ma-harvest, kagaya ng petsay and kangkong. Meron ding pagmatagalan like okra, meron ding eggplant. At uh, depende ho kasi sa area, depende sa pick-up point. For example, ang area na yan ay alam kong yung mga gardeners ay malawak ang area. Binilalagyan natin ng kalabasa, cucumber, ang palaya. Pero yung nasa urban community ang binibigyan natin ng mga uh, seeds ay yung uh, maliliit lang, hindi masyado na po-consume ng space at Uh, kung makikita nyo, uh, usually ang combination natin ay mayroong uh, climbing na mga uh, uh, vegetables, kagaya ng uh, ampalaya and cucumber. Then, meron naman yung uh, nasa lupa lang sila, kagaya ng okra and petsay. So, talagang pinag-aralan natin yung combination ng seeds. So, ito yung binibigay natin. So, as much as possible, bawat household ay isa lang yung kanyang makukuha. Kung titignan ninyo, maliit lang masyado na contribution nito, pero yung impact niya sa sa bawat pamilya ay napakalaki. For example, kung ang isang pamilya ay nagtanim nito ay yung limang household members, for example, ay talagang nakakabenepisyo sila. Nakakabenepisyo sila uh, mula sa idea na naiibsan yung problema nila imbis na nakatutok sa mga negative na nangyayari sa sa TV, sa social media ay uh, ibang productive activity yung kanilang nagagawa. And at the same time, nakakaroon ng family bonding at na-exercise yung mga uh, members ng family. At ibang lumalabas dito na mga outcome ay yung makakapitbahay ay nagiging mas united, nakakaroon ng, ng, uh, ng uh, pag-uusap kung paano ba gagawin yung kanilang gardening. So yun yung mga uh, ilan sa mga nakita natin. Ang tipid na yung challenge sa, sa ngayon ay parang ang version niya is yung community entry. Kung may kita nyo ngayon, ang daming lumalabas na community pantry na uh, ang idea din ay mamigay ng mga food. But ang kaibahan nito sa tipid na yung challenge ay hindi tayo namimigay ng food pero tinuturoan natin ng mga uh, kababayan natin na magtanim ng, ng mga gulay at binibigyan natin sila ng seeds. Ang seeds na to actually ay secondary lamang dito. Ang talagang goal ng tipid na challenge ay yung advokasya na maraming dapat ang magtanim. So, uh, nakakatuwa na uh, there were more than 7,000 na uh, seeds ang naipamigay natin and ang estimate natin is nasa more than 3,000 na households ang nag-take ng tipid na challenge. Ito yung mga ating mga pick-up points. Mayroon pick-up points tayo sa Tagayan di Oro City, sa Cebu, sa Piquet, North Cotabato, sa Mitsayap, North Cotabato. We also have in Tacolum City, and in Esperanza, Zamboanga City, and in Bongao, Tawitawi, Cebu 2 in Tawitawi. We also have in Lamitan City and Basilan, Marawi City and Iligan City. Um, sa loob lamang ito ng around 3 months, grabe yung uh, ating... Uh, Uh, pick up points, uh, dumami talaga sila sa support na rin ng ating mga funders and donors. At sa Maguindanao, uh, more than uh, more than 30 din ang ating mga pick up points sa Maguindanao, uh, particularly sa Datu Lid Sinsuan, sa Sultan Kudara. So, ibig sabihin nito, possible pala na magkaroon ng mga pick up points. Uh, we, we have uh, some in uh, Visayas, And there were some requests in Luzon and uh, Cebu. We were actually trying to make the advocacy nationwide. Although the advocacy became nationwide, pero yung ating pick-up points ay hindi pa natin nakakaya sa ngayon na magkaroon ng points sa iba't ibang uh, uh, lugar. But the good news is that dahil sa pick-up points na nakikita, dahil sa tipitanim challenge, ay maraming mga LGUs ang nagkayat. For example, in Zamboanga City, meron din silang version ng Tipitanim uh, Challenge or in Zamboanga del Sur. At uh, nagkayat din natin ang iba't ibang agencies like the uh, Bureau of Plant Industry, marami pang mga agencies, uh, the ATI, na magkaroon na rin sila ng distribution of seeds at naging advocate na rin sila. Although ang DA, matagal nag-advocate ng urban gardening, 
Pero mas uh, maraming nag-advocate ng kitip-tanim challenge or gardening noong panahon na noong panahon na yon. Ang nangyari din ay maraming gumaya ng kitip-tanim challenge at pinalitan yung pangalan. Kami sa Tita C ay napakasaya na maraming ganoon ay not necessary na dapat kitip-tanim challenge din ang name. Masaya kami na at least na-replicate yung ating advocacy. At nagkaroon tayo ng mga supporters, uh, for example, from Bangsamoro Youth Commission at sinusuportahan yung, uh, yung ating advocacy. And of course, we have uh, the National Youth Commission with the uh, chairperson and CEO Ryan Enriquez. Sinuportahan yung ating advocacy. After ng kanyang uh, post ng ganito ay talagang from Luzon and Visayas, marami na rin yung nagtatanong sa atin. So the good thing is marami na rin ang, 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 ang nagagawa natin ay uh, nire-refer natin yung mga humingi ng seats doon sa, mga, sa kanilang mga LGU. And ano ba yung outcomes ng uh, Tipitanin Challenge so far? There were thousands of guardians uh, established dahil doon. Kung may kita nyo dito, this was in... Uh, Tawi-tawi, ang kanyang bahay ay malapit sa... So, yun ho. Thousands of guidelines were established dahil dun sa Tipitanim Challenge. And, ibig sabihin nito, hindi lang yung uh, nagtanim ang makikinabang, kundi yung buong pamilya. So, if there are uh, five members of the household at mga 3,000 ay nagtanim, around 15,000 yung makikinabang dun sa mga gulay na tinanim. At nakapag-exercise pa, nasikatan pa ng araw which, at uh, yung, yung, yung time niya ay mas naging productive at na bawasan yung kanyang anxiety sa mga pangyayari. Okay. And thousands of gardens were established. For example, there are also in New Zealand, uh, ito, sa Maguindanao, ito. Then, family and community relationships improve dahil nagtutulungan sila. Merong mga community gardens din na na-established. Uh, then yung family, may makikita kang yung buong pamilya ay kasali sa gardening, nakakatuwang tingnan. And uh, ang laki na rin ho yung, yung, uh, uh, yung participation ng mga kaltaan sa gardening. Sila, malaki din ho yung papel ng pag-advocate pag, uh, kasi uh, alam naman natin na mga kabataan ay mas magaling uh, sa paggamit ng social media. So, uh, sila yung uh, nag-spread nag ng kanilang mga ginagawa at nag-kayas ng kanilang mga kaibigan. Then, foods were produced uh, for family consumption, neighbors, and a source of income also. So, pinapayagan natin ang mga tita si na ibenta yung kanilang mga uh, tanim. May, may isang case nga na bibili sana ako ng uh, gulay at tinanong ko. Ina-advocate kasi natin na yung mga extra harvest nila ay ipamigay doon sa kanilang mga kapitbahay o ipamigay sa mga walang access sa pagkain. Marami na hong cases na uh, nagsasabi sa atin na nas, uh, i-announce mo naman na pwede silang mag-pick up dito sa ating garden dahil uh, marami masyadong uh, extra at hindi maubos. So talagang na-improve natin yung, uh, naibabalik natin yung mga samahan uh, ng, ng kapitbahay, na-improve natin sa mga relationship. Talagang nakikita natin na pagtutulungan. Ito yung uh, ating update. This was uh, as of last year. Hindi natin na-update. Uh, na There were total of 7,000 total number of repacked vegetable seeds, 3,000 estimated number of gardens supported. 18 na pick-up points in at least uh, 7 provinces. Uh, pero yung last na update natin, there were, there were more than 30 pick-up points. Two online gardening sessions were organized. Merong uh, uh, 200,000 plus total worth of seeds and received. We have from uh, Department of Agriculture. We have from uh, MAFI in Bagsamoro Tauna Muslito in Muslim Mindanao. We have from Peace and Equity Foundation. Uh, and there were some organizations na, na nagbigay ng seeds and funds and merong individual din na nagbigay, nagbigay. So mostly ang source ng, ng seeds natin ay from DTA members and we have from uh, uh, 
BTM members and government line agencies. We have also from non-government organizations and some individual contributions. At uh, in order for for sustainability, then ang ang ito yung hinahanap natin na ideal to fit the new challenge to first or ideal to kasi first we want them to appreciate the gardening. We have these uh, online conversation, we have the advocacy. Then second, if they want to get uh, tita seeds, they can help. Then uh, we, we want them to grow their own food. E yung extra ay pwede nilang share yung kanilang harvest. Then we want them also to sell harvest at yung may benta nila ay para makabili needs sila ng seeds. Ang tita siya ay nag-start nung halos walang movement. At ang um, pwede ka lang mag-move ay very limited. So, uh, ang tita siya ay napapanahon nung panahon na yon napapanahon yung distribution natin ng seeds kasi walang mabilhan ng seeds close yung mga tindahan. Pero ngayon ay medyo relax na pwede nang bumili ng seeds sa mga tindahan. At ginagawa din natin ito, we ask uh, uh, individuals and organizations to, to donate seeds. At ang alam niyo ba ang price natin sa isang pot na ito ay uh, nakakahalaga lang ng 29 pesos. So 29 pesos na yan ay nakakatulong ka ng limang miyembro ng uh, household. At hindi lang makikinabang sa isang araw, kundi makikinabang ng 3 to 4 months, minsan 5 months, na meron silang daily supply ng gulay. Kung itatanim ng maayos. Uh, nagkaroon din ho tayo ng uh, ang donation drive sa pagpamagitan ng pagbibenta ng Tipit Tanim Challenge shirt. Uh, double purpose ito. Uh, nakakaroon tayo ng income for seeds and at the same time uh, naipapalaganap din natin yung ating advocacy. Ang Tipit Tanim Challenge also was awarded by uh, uh, tayo or uh, 10 accomplished youth organization. Uh, umabot tayo sa qualification, uh, qualifiers, bilang qualifier. But uh, when we were asked by the tayo kung ano ba yung ating structure, ano ba yung ating vision, it, it was uh, registered. Ang tipid na may hindi ho registered, it was just an advocacy. Pero ang uh, kasamahan natin ay uh, iniisip din nila paano maging uh, official or maging magkaroon ng legal name yung tipid na niya. How to start the advocacy? Ito yung gusto natin na, for example, itong uh, kayo ho ng mga estudyante ay magkaroon din ho ng advocacy on uh, urban gardening. Pwede kayong mag-start, magtanim, uh, kahit wala hong seeds, may mga uh, available propagules na pwede natin itanim sa ating mga bahay. Kagaya ng kangkong, napakadali lang uh, itanim ang kangkong, ube, alugbate, spring onion, yung gabi, then kasaba. Itong mga uh, propagules na ito, o yung mga tanim na ito, ay pwedeng tumubo na hindi masyado kailangan ng malak malaking space at hindi mo na kailangan bilhin ang uh, mga seeds nito. So, pwede kayong mag-start nito. Uh, you can also set up your own pick-up points for seeds. Uh, hindi naman mahal yung seeds. Mahal kung individually magbili, pero kung bibili ka, for example, ang isang pack ay tag 100 pesos, isang uri ng seed lang yun. Pero kung bibili ka ng apat, kahit siguro mga 10 ng household, ay pwede na makinabang doon. Hindi mo naman kasi kayang ubusin yung isang pack, for example, ng uh, petsay, dahil napakarami yun. Uh, maliban na lang kung mass production ang gagawin mo. So kung household gardening ay uh, isang pack siguro ng... Uh, uh, petsay ay pwede na doon yung mga sampung kabahayan. So, yung ginagawa natin, bumibili tayo noon at nire-repack natin. So, you can set up your own pick-up points, probably a place accessible, accessible, accessible to many. Then, create an advocacy group, set up social media tools, such as pages and groups. Nagkaroon lang tayo ng page nung kasagsaga ng ating advocacy at uh, sa ngayon ay more than 4,000 ating, ang ating followers at doon natin uh, nilalagay yung ating advocacy, yung nilalagay natin yung mga ginagawa ng ating mga advocates. And let those who took the challenge to be an advocate also. So, ang ginagawa natin, uh, inaas natin na i-post din nila yung kanilang picture para mahikayat yung kanilang mga kaibigan. Then, continue the adv advocacy, explaining the importance of gardening, uh, mapa-face to face man, mapa-social uh, media, mapa-radio, or iba pang uh, outlet. 
Then inviting some experts also and experienced individuals for the webinar or face-to-face -face seminar. Ay, madalas natin ginagawa ito. Then invite other personalities to, to support your advocacy. For example, si Mayor or si President ng school or si, uh, for example, sa amin yung Magsamol Youth Commission and National Youth Commission para sila kasi yung mas maraming reach at sila yung nakakatulong para may, pala, may palaganap yung advocacy. Then look for uh, funding supports. Maraming nagko-call for proposals na they have available funds to support mga activities related to uh, food security, related to active, uh, related to uh, um, uh, cop-up mechanism sa uh, pandemic. So, ang ating last word ay ito yung itong word from uh, uh, Department of Agriculture si uh, uh, Secretary. Sabi niya, we need young blood in agriculture. They have the defining attributes when it comes to utilizing modern agriculture. They are well connected to electronic devices that can help modernize farming and fishing activities. Ngayon, nire-recognize na ng DA o ng Pilipinas na ang ating mga fisher folks and farmers are actually frontliners. So maraming salamat po sa pakikinig. If you want to uh, ask, uh, you can uh, you can directly message us sa uh, Tupitanim Challenge uh, Facebook page. We also have the Gmail, tipitanim at gmail.com, or you can uh, actually uh, text us or call us at 0927-922-4299. Maraming salamat ho at, at uh, uh, naway magkaroon ho ng tipitanim challenge sa inyong mga lugar. Thank you and uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Sir Nas, for that very inspire, inspiring and informative talk. We will now open the floor for comments and questions for our speaker, if you have any. We encourage you to share your thoughts, which can be in the forms of questions, sharing of insights, or realizations. To facilitate our open forum, kindly click the raise hand button and wait for your name to be called before unmuting to speak. You may also use the chat box to send your question and I will read them for you so the speaker can address it. While you are getting ready with your questions, we will have, we will have our first reaction from Ms. Judy Pulong. Thank you, Nika. Gandang hapon po, Sir Busan. Magandang hapon din po sa inyong lahat. Ako po pala si Judy Ann Pulong, third year BSB AIM student. Um, una po sa lahat, gusto ko pong magpasalamat, Sir Na, sa advokasi ang ibinahagi niyo po sa amin ngayong hapon na siyang makakatulong po sa amin lalo na sa panahon ngayon na may pandemic po. Especially na isa sa mga naging hobby na po ng bawat household ng lockdown is through pagtatanim po talaga. Namangha din po ako, lalo na nang malaman ko po ang mga detalye ng inyong programa dahil may mga advokasi na po akong naririnig na katulad nito regarding planting Ngunit hindi po siguro kasing laki ng proyekto po ninyo. Kaya nakakataba din po ng puso na malamin na marami po kayong natutulungan. Um, bilang miyembro ng Center for Community Development Volunteers, or also known as CCD Votes, ay na-inspire niyo po akong ipagpatuloy ang ganitong advokasiya, lalo na isa rin po sa aming mission at vision is to be a social arm that empower and develop responsive communities. And through your discussion, nakita ko po na isa po ito sa pwede naming gawin para mas matulungan at mapaunlad din po ang aming komunidad, lalo pat wala pa po atang TTC pick-up points dito sa Bicol Region, tama po, especially in Naga. With that, maraming salamat po talaga. Um, panghuli na lang po siguro, sir. Although ang inyong topic ay merely nagre-revolve po sa food sustainability through urban gardening, I want to ask for just tips and advices para sa mga rural areas or sa mga kabahayan na wala pong lugar na mapagtatamnan dahil po sa sementado ang kanilang lugar. Ano po kayang mga, mga klase ng pananim ang pwede po nilang itanim? Bukod po sa nabanggit nyo po kaninang kangkong, ube, spring onion na tulad nga po ng sinabi nyo ay di na po kailangan ng madaming spaces. At kung sa, at kung sa panong paraan po nila ito gagawin for them to also grow 
their own food and to lessen their food expenses na din po kahit na wala po sila sa urban areas. That's all po and thank you again for your stimulating discussion. Thank you, Judy, for your question and reaction. Sir Nas, would you like to respond to that reaction and question po? <laughs> Um, um, tama ho sa urban uh, areas, salising ko yung uh, salising ko yung pasalo ng riding riding. Um, pero ang riding kung pang household consumption ay hindi naman ko kailangan ng uh, maraming soil o o malabas na area. Sa bahay nung kasi sa ganang lockdown ay ay lima ako puno ng alaya. Then uh, at size. At ito, then tangkong, at ito ay nakapasustain sa amin. Uh, kasi ang tangkong, for example, nakatalim sa, sa, may nabibili na kong seeds ng tangkong. Ano natin dati ay, kung pinatalim natin yung tangkong lang. Pero may, meron na kong nabibili ng seeds. So kung makatalim ka ng mga two meters lang ang haba, then yung ano ang seeds ng lawan. So nakapasustain na yun actually ng daily mo na lead ng gulay na tangkong. Tapos may ang palayakan na lima ang puno, ilagay mo lang sa container, bigyan ng lupa, then uh, kung meron kang compost material or kung sa mga bono, pwede din. So, hindi ko kailangan, at kaya ang binibigyan natin ng seed ay limited lamang at kaya hindi ko kailangan ng production. So, kahit mga container gardening lamang ay pwede ko lang. So, yun ho. Uh, maging makumaraan lang, alam ko na kapataan ay uh, maraming way to do things alam ko din na uh, marami tayong pwedeng magamit sa ating mga backyard, na pwedeng kuliman. And even though uh, sa bahay namin wala talagang lupa na pagkaman, pero marami yung may kabayan lang sinasabi ko, uh, i-re-research kayo sa mga, mga reading materials, uh, Department of Agriculture, API, sa Bureau of Science Industry, na pwedeng yung basahin yung ganila nga. Hindi naman kung komplikado ang uh, gardening. Kasi ang mga parents natin, yung mga uh, ninuno natin, ay talagang lipat sila ng tatanin. So, uh, wala ko, hindi ko totoo yung green thumb na uh, meron yung selected tao na sila lang hindi ko totoo yun. So, anyone ho, ang uh, mga ninuno natin talaga ay lipat sila. Maalala nyo, yung mga uh, uh, dating mga pangunay kung bibisita ko sa bahay ng yung uh, lola, ang cell, talagang hindi ka makakawik kung wala sa kabao ng gulay. So yun ho yung gusto natin ibalik, yung willingness ng mga household na natin. So thank you very much. Thank you very much po, sir. Thank you po, sir Naz. And for our second reactor for this topic is Miss Paula Raniola. Good afternoon po, sir. This is Paula Feliz Raniola from the Department of Media Studies. Thank you, sir, for sharing with us the Tipid Danim Challenge. I really think that this initiative is one effective way for us to promote self-sufficiency and food sustainability amid the ongoing crisis. I just have one question po, sir. How do you go about the challenges in transportation and the process of distribution given the strict regulations as per our situation at present? Tama ho yun. Um, Nag-exist ang tipid tanim noong kasagsaga ng lockdown na may limited mood mo. Kaya nga ho, meron tayong mga fixed points. Uh, nilalagay lang natin sa isang area na kung saan may access yung mga uh, pizza-seas, yung tipid tanim na challenge sa equipment. So, yung pick up point na yun, parang yun yung nagsisilbing tulay para may doon makapunta yung mga gardeners. Tapos, uh, I'm sure sa panahon ngayon, pwede naman ho lumabas uh, yung mga, uh, uh, hindi yung seniors o yung mga bata. Kung meron kong makakaset at lang kayo ng pick-up point, at uh, maglalagay lang kayo doon ng something timeline, so pwede pumunta na ganun sa oras, at mas, may mas, at may social distancing, tapos magdala lang yung ballpen, pwede na yun. Um, sa ngayon, uh, 
Uh, I'm not sure with, with the uh, situation sa Laga, pero ngayon sa uh, Mindanao ay makakalap ako ng pag-uwi uh, na sa inyo, o hindi sa inyo, o hindi ko naman, hindi ba? So, uh, yun lang, ang, ang strategy nyo is pick up ng set-up point. Uh, pick up point. Hindi naman ho kasi uh, may hirap mag-set up ng pick-up point, basta maka-sublish lang kayo ng, uh, ng area, then uh, mag mag uh, Repart kayo ng mga kids. Kung, kung mag-uumpisa nga kayo, siguro kahit may 3,000 peso or 2,000 peso. At magsabili lang kayo ng apat na uri ng seed o lima, then yun yung i-repart nyo yun. Kasi kung bibili kayo ng isang seed, bawat pamilya ay hindi ko uh, practical plus hindi ko kayang itanim ng pamilya yung isang uh, kaya i-repart natin sa konti-kunti para Tama lang dun sa space ng ating mga bahay, tama lang dun sa effort na yung capacity ng household, at tama din dun sa pangangilangan ng mga. So, sa ngayon ay hindi na masyadong challenging yung transportation, unlike before, but even before, nakaya namin yun na mag- maganda kasi na hindi mo direct binibigay sa mga kabahayan. Kasi ang tendency pag binibigay mo direct sa mga kabahayan ay baka pagkuha nila ng seat, ilagay lang dun sa isang kapitina at kalimutan. Pero pag sila ang nag-e-effort sa kuha sa pick-up point, ay kakikita mo na talaga yung pirate sa buko ng kapitanin. At aalagaan yung Thank you, Paolo. Thank you po, sir. I'm sure that a lot more locals will be inspired to join in this challenge considering how many of us became Blanquitos and Blanquitas during the quarantine. I'm hoping that after this webinar, there will be more people to echo the necessity of these efforts and the importance of peace advocacy, not only in terms of our individual consumption, but also in combating food shortage, mitigating hoarding, as well as inflation. Kudos po to your organization and more power po sa Thank you so much, Judy and Paula. It's time for questions or insights from other students in our Zoom and YouTube audience. Sir Nas is still with us and he is very willing to engage with us in this conversation. So, ito po yung question natin, sir. Um, what, are the que- what are the challenges in maintaining an urban garden? So, the experience and challenge talaga na na-encounter ng mga takers ay yung soil. Uh, kasi wala silang nakikina ng soil at wala din silang uh, garden soil. At uh, yung iba walang, walang space. But uh, gaya ng sabi kong binibigay natin na uh, seed ay hindi kailangan ng malaking space. For example, ang, ang pet size yung parang isang dapat lang ng petsay o isang kukusara ay uh, pwede na yun sa isang kalangana huwag mo lang sabay-sabay sa lem para hindi mo sabay-sabay na sa pet. So, ang ginagawa ng ilan ay kung may kamag-anak siya magkuha sa farm o minsan may nabibili ng mga uh, garden soil, yun yung ginagawa nila. So, ang pinaka-challenge talaga, talaga is yung uh, uh, magkuha ng yung mga planting ng soil. Uh, hindi ko masasabi na problema ngayon yung information kung ano, uh, ano magtanim o yung proseso ng pagtanim. Kasi ngayon, ang information ay lang kadali. Uh, we have the internet. And, uh, uh, kaya nga, no, most of the takers ng tipid tanim ay meron Facebook. Ang assumption natin, pag may Facebook ay may connection, may, may, may internet connection at nakakasit ng mga So, hindi ko at challenge yung uh, uh, way paano, paano mo, paano mo, uh, yung paraan ng pag-ating. The fact na, 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 na lalalaman niya yung tipid na rin, ibig sabihin kaya niya ang mag-search ng information. So, yun ho yung pinakamalaking challenge na na-encounter na ito is yung uh, soil. Pangalawa din is yung uh, uh, presentation. Maraming nagbibiklamo na, uy, yung... yung gulay namin ay uh, piniteste. So, ang ang ginagawa natin noon ay meron tayong online conversations na pwede silang direct magtanong. Until now, kung kayo ho ay magsisimulang mag-garden, ay pwede ho kayong mag-chat sa amin o pwede kayong mag-text sa amin at pwede ho naming sagutin yung 
mga questions tungkol dun sa test, tungkol dun sa soil. Kasi uh, ako na sa akadema ko, uh, then I have friends na agricultorist, mga mga soil scientist, mga plant protectionist, at uh, mabilis silang nakapagod doon sa mga field. So yun yung nakita namin, yung soil test and testation. But I understand, kung magbabasa lang yung situation, marami na mga paraan para uh, malunak sa mga problem. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Nas. Ito po, we have question from Jack Ivan Odal. In your opinion, how rich po is the Philippines in terms of agriculture? Ang Philippines ay talagang nag-reputure sa isa. At nakakalungkot na isa tayo sa mga top rise na importer despite na tayo ay agriculture sa isa. But may mga challenges din po kasi ang ating Philippine agriculture. For example, ang naikita natin yung farmers natin ay tumatanda na kasi walang panibagong workforce sa ating farm. Ang average age ng farmers natin ngayon ay more than 50 years old. Kaya nga ang hihikayat natin ang mga kabataan na tuloy yung world not only to study agriculture but also to contribute dun sa food production chain. At ang, ang Pilipinas nga ay maliban doon sa salasabi kong uh, agricultural country, ay malaki din ho yung naiambag natin ay agricultural country. For example, isa tayo sa top producer ng coconut products, mga uh, ganyan, banana, then kilya. Uh, Talaga kong uh, malaki ang papel ng uh, agricultura sa sa ekonomiya ng Pilipinas, lalo na sa Guadalupe. At makita natin na uh, napaka-resilient ng Pilipin agriculture system natin, even though may pandemic, ay ito lang yung, yung sector na tumaas, yung industry at yung ibang sector ay bumaba. Pero yung, yung agriculture facility policy ay ang So, mayaman po talaga tayo in terms of agricultural resources, ang kailangan lang natin ay may maayos na sistema, may maayos na mining system, may sapat na policy, may maayos na patubig, may sapat na pangutang uh, para sa mga farmers. So, kailangan lang ho talagang uh, tutupahan na ang ating mga farmers to make sure na uh, hindi lang sila nagkukuti, pero kumikita din sila. Uh, kasi may mga notions ng farmers natin, they only produce uh, Much. Pero yung balik sa kanila ay hindi ganun talaga. So dapat in a way na palaki natin yung kanilang production ay dapat lumaki din yung kanilang production. So talaga ho ng Pilipinas ay isa sa pinakamayaman in terms of uh, pag-upuso. Kailangan lang ho ng mga Thank you. Uh, ito pa po sir from Jason Espinosilia. What specific fertilizers po would you recommend since medyo limited po yung land na pwedeng makultivate in urban areas and using fertilizer with nitrogen might affect the nutrients of the soil and may impact harvest? Is it really sustainable po if household, households decided to crop year-around? Thank you very much po. Yes po, um, sustainable po yung year-round provided na hindi sa mas production. Ang, ang ina-advocate ina natin ay household-based uh, food production. Ang kagandahan nun ay hindi ka na mamamalengke, less na ang, uh, less na ang uh, punta mo sa palengke, less na ang interaction mo with people. Then uh, sigurado mo na malinis yung uh, harvest mo, then safe. In regard sa fertilizer, ang, ang, ang plants kasi at least kailangan niya yung nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. At pinaka-safe na, uh, na fertilizer na meron yung tatlo na yun ay yung 14-14-14 or tinatawag nyo lang complete fertilizer. Pero kung uh, maliitan lang naman ito, uh, at least... Uh, Although hindi na natin i-recommend pa yung, yung kailangan pa sa soil test. Pero may mga indicator kasi, pag makita mo yung tanim na ganito yung tulay ng, ng dahon, tapos may tinungyan ng roots, ganito yung tanong behavior, ibig sabihin, pwedeng may, pwedeng may 
peste o pwedeng may kakulangan dun sa nutrient sa soil. So, depende ho yun sa sa um, soil, yun yung condition ng soil. Pero pag nakakabili kayo ng garden soil, ay uh, almost complete na po yan. Uh, kaya niya ho yung yung, yung uh, eraction cycle. For example, yung pet side, kaya niya ho yung kaya niya ho yung harvest. Yung uh, garden soil ang nabibili niya. So, depende ho yun. And even, ang crop ay magkakaiba din ho ng uh, nutrient signal. For example, ang corn ay nakakalaki ang kanilang ang kanilang So, nitrogen. So, iba-iba ko yung pangangailangan ng bawat po. But, kung uh, specific po, pwede po kayong mag-text, pwede po kayong mag-make uh, examen. Kung, uh, kung makikita nyo na may problema dun sa pulsubo o sa mga. Kasi, uh, ang, ang application ng fertilizer ay depende po dun sa need ng soil and dun sa pangangailangan. Thank you. Thank you po, sir. Ito pa po, meron pa po tayong question. Can our country maintain the quality and quantity of our agriculture despite the ongoing industrialization? Yeah, industrialization is a challenge of the Filipino agriculture system. Uh, maraming uh, kinoconvert na rin ng mga agricultural areas, mga mga industrial use, mga industrial use. Um, I must say, depending on the policy of the national government. If the policy of the national government is talagang to feed self-sufficiency, kaya na natin ito. I believe there are still areas na hindi natin lang maximize. Marami pa hong um, uh, irrigable areas na hindi natin na i-irrigate na pwede siya for uh, uh, light production. So, kung gugustuhin ng Pilipinas, na magiging self-sufficient tayo kaya. And uh, meron nga lang mga challenges. Ang sinasabi ko mga challenges na ito ay uh, um, we were actually uh, self-sufficient before. Kung uh, nababasa niyo yung, uh, yung during the time ng Green Revolution, kung saan napakalaki at nag-export pa tayo ng mga alay, ng, ng rice, at uh, talagang meron uh, mas production. Yun nga lang, hindi naging sustainable ang uh, method na yun. So, ang challenge na sinasabi ko sa Pilipin na Bito Free System din ay yung bagyo, yung, uh, yung baha, at nakikita nyo na kakalakin ang loss of content of this year. Tapos yung uh, nakikita ko din na uh, may problema ay yung uh, land ownership din natin. Kaya nga meron tayo yung concurrency na buhayong yung law and program para ayusin yung land on ito. So, kung maayos lamang ito at kung willing ang ating national government, we will want a self-special country in terms of food. Kaya pa rin ho ng Pilipinas maging. Thank you, sir. And ito pa po, what other benefits of urban gardening aside from food security and sustainability? Yeah, marami. Nakaka-exercise tayo. Uh, Nakaka-miss yung panahon na ang bonding ng pamilya, ang bonding ng uh, parents sa mga anak ay nasa farm. Uh, I'm not sure kung uh, may mga naka-experience kayo noon. At uh, una, nakaka-exercise. Pangalawang bonding din ng family. Pangatlo ay since ikaw yung nag-tube, sigurado mong walang contamination ng chemicals, hindi ito nag-tube mo lagyan ng spray. Uh, Pangapat din ay uh, yung anxiety natin sa araw-araw na naririnig na natin na balita ay nababawasan. At least meron tayong uh, ibang pinagpakabalahan so naiiwasan natin yung plus yung sunlight. Mahalaga na tayo, minsan tayo ay lumalabas sa wisan, then yung sunlight alam natin na ito ay hindi yung sunlight. So il ilan lamang yun sa mga benefit na ng urban gardening. At sinasabi mo nga ng mga uh, iba, mga experts na maganda din as, as sa atin para sa personal na personal na development or uh, na, na, na dapat ay minsan nakakahawag din tayo o bumabalik din tayo sa nature. Parang let us go back to the nature, back to the nature para at least hindi, natin, hindi tayo masyadong uh, nagiging uh, pagmataas. Minsan, 
at napipil natin yung dinaranas uh, natin yung farmers na ganito din pala ang uh, farming plus nakaka-add tayo dun sa uh, the fact na nasisigurado natin na hindi magkakaroon nakakontribute tayo dun na hindi magkakaroon ng uh, food shortage kasi kung magka- magkaroon tayo yun yung iniwasan natin eh. kasi kung magkakaroon tayo ng food shortage mas magulo ang problema ng ng uh, economic price ng food shortage mas magulo yan sa isa kaysa okay kasi ang health crisis ay pwede pang nahandahan pero ang pag nagkaroon tayo ng uh, uh, ng food shortage ay talagang magulo ka ng mga tao magkakaroon ng hoarding magkakaroon ng uh, increase ng price malaki ang inflation uh, hyperinflation so yun yung iniiwasan natin at by by planting hindi lamang sa hot ayun na si kinabang kagaya na lang sabi ko pero lamin maintain natin na yung for example yung ampalaya ay hindi tumataas yung presyo ng ampalaya kasi nga alam natin na kapag uh, low yung supply ng ng uh, isang produkto may tendency na tataas ang presyo pero kung malaki o mayroong tapat uh, na supply ay naiiwasan natin yung pag-increase ng presyo Thank you po, Sir Nas. Um, we have an insight from Jean Franco. Thank you po, Sir, for this advocacy. I'm hoping na lumawak pa ang maabot ng mga lugar ng, ng, ng napakaganda ninyong challenge. Gabayan po, sana kayo lagi ng Panginoon, lalo na sa ganitong advocacy na nakakatulong hindi lang sa mga kapwa natin Filipino na nangangailangan, lalo na ngayon na may pandemya. At syempre, pati na rin sa kalikasan. I'm always proud to be raised by a farmer and learn farming at a young age. Nagtatanim din ako sa bakuran at sa bukid ng mga veg- vegetables, fruit-bearing, trees and crops. God bless, stay safe and healthy. Any reaction po, sir? Yeah, thank you very much for the reaction. Um, ako, um, at least, uh, at least uh, may mga kabataan na uh, nagtatanim pa rin, yun nga, yun nga ho yung uri natin, may pag-aaral kasi na nakakalungkot na result sa last uh, 2020, may pag-aaral na ang mga rice farmers, tinanong survey, this is nationwide survey, kung ano yung gusto mong maging, mga rice farmers sila, ang respondents, at tinanong kung ano yung gusto mong magiging kabago ng iyong mga anak, at uh, most sa kanila ay ayaw na nilang maging farmer ang kanila ng mga anak. I understand yung kanilang concern, pero kung magiging gano'n yung magiging friend natin, magiging uh, uh, mag-re-rely tayo sa importation, alam natin na kung mag-re-rely tayo sa importation, in terms pala, ngayon natin na-realize na in terms of crisis pala, mas uunahin ang mga producers sa iyo ng kanilang bansa bago sila mag-i-import. So, uh, maganda na mayroon tayong local food producers. So, ang mga kabataan, kung gaya ninyo, sir, uh, na Uh, nawiwiling din ng sanin, maganda na at least may marami pa tayo may tayo sa mga gano'n. Thank you po, sir. Ito po from Athena Miguel. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for promoting this advocacy and taking your time to share it with us. I have a question po. How do we keep insects from damaging our crops without them developing resistance to pesticides? Sorry. Ano po? Um, how do we keep insects from damaging our crops without them developing resistance to pesticides? Um, meron may in pest management meron kung step by step. Ang pinakauna ay pwede mong tanggalin. Kung meron kayo nakita mga pest, eh, pwede yung tanggalin yun. Ang picking, pwede yung tanggalin isa-isa. So, hindi pa marami. Then, pangalawa, yung mga may physical din na method. Halimbawa, uh, na may nakikita kang mga peste, pwede, kang, pwede mong lagyan ng net para hindi mapasit ko ng peste. Actually, sa principle ng integrated pest management, pinakalit, pinakahuli pong ginagamitan ng chemical. Not possible, hindi ko ginagamitan ng chemical. Pero, uh, pag household gardening din kasi, you don't need to apply lang ng side meron kayong pwede kayong mag-apply ng sabon, pwede kayong mag-apply ng mga halong-halong uh, uh, 
Pantes. Aleluya, sili. Eh, may mga methods mo na gano'n na pwede nyo pray. Ang kagandahan kasi sa household and life of time, ay eh, talagang nababantayan mo daily kasi ang lang sa baturang mo. So, hindi ho lalala yung test doon. At hindi din ho practical na mag-a-apply ka pa ng uh, pesticide kasi hindi naman malawakan. Uh, meron sinatawag ng threshold level. Baka mas malaki pa yung gastos mo sa pesticide or insecticide kaysa actual mga harvest ko. So, hindi na ho uh, necessary yun. So, yung pwedeng uh, physical method, uh, uh, may, pag pag ang tanim mo ay uh, uh, naaarawan ng man, naman ng maayos, meron na maayos na ventilation, hindi naman ho agad-agad yan. So, may makita kayong test, pwede nyo pwede tanggalin. At meron ho mga method na available lang sa bahay, kaya ng sabon, na pwede nyo ang spray, at uh, 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 umaalis naman yung mga test. Thank you, sir. Um, eto po, is the Philippines agriculture affected by the migration and immigration of skilled workers, including those in the agriculture sector? Any ideas on this po? Migration to go from rural to urban, yes. Uh, marami tayong kasilala na mga uh, farmers ay uh, mga farmers na minsan sa urban community na sila nakatira. Pati hindi yung wala lang ng farm. For example, sa Magindano, marami na rin farm dito na uh, idol land na, wala nang uh, itinatanim. Dahil, uh, for example, yung family, umuwi na sa city, dun na, then namatay na yung tatay, hindi na bumabalik yung anak sa farm. So marami yung mga services na yun. At talagang apektado yung, yung uh, ating productivity sa uh, farm, yung, yung ating volume of production. Sometimes, naman ho sa uh, yung mga workers natin na itinipunta sa ibang bansa. Kung meron mang cases na gano'n ay uh, na farmers natin na itinipunta sa ibang bansa, wala. Uh, konti. Konti lang din ho yung gano'n. Pero yung uh, within the country na migration or urbanization from rural to urban community, talagang may effect sa yun. Thank you po, sir. Ito po. Um, I am a second year electronics engineering student at ADNU. I am considering agriculture as, as a focus for my project in my fourth year. What areas can technology or specifically engineering help agriculture or farmers in the Philippines? Similar to your advocacy. Thank you, Po. Uh, mag maganda yun na uh, I myself pinag-iisipan ko din na uh, mag-conduct ng study how to combine uh, agriculture with uh, other fields. Um, for example, uh, pwede kang maka-develop maka ng isang application na uh, pupunta ka ng farm at uh, ito consider mo ang mga factors, then pwede lang automatic mag-come up makikita mo din yung sustainability ng farm na yun in terms of uh, environmental sustainability and sustainability and uh, social sustainability. So, yung mga ganong uh, idea. Anything na um, ang ginamin ko na yun ay is an application na parang mag-click-click ka lang. For example, itatanong mo ilan-ilan ang kanyang baka, ilan ang kanyang itik, gaano kalawak, anong ginaspray niya, ilan ang organic mo siya, ilan ang kanyang puno, ilan ang uh, coconut, mga ganon. Then, automatic na yung maglalabas na na score. Na, uy, itong score ng farm mo, baba kasi environmental sustainability, and then ito yung recommendation. Yung mga ganong, yung mga ganong mga technology na pwede ma-develop. Uh, pwede din pag-aralan yung, yung, yung smart farming, uh, tapos yung in the use of, uh, yung precision farming, for example, uh, sa pagtatanim ng mga mangga, talaga meron precise sa pag-aaral gagamit ka ng uh, GIS, gagamit ka ng interested may outing or farm, yung mga ganong mga technology na pwede natin i-apply sa YouTube. Uh, Thank you po, sir. Last question na lang po. Um, is it true that the Philippines is lagging behind our neighboring countries like Vietnam and Thailand in terms of agriculture and food production? 
considering that they once learned our they once learned it from the Philippines. Why are the reasons? Um, wa wa uh, wala pa ako na encounter na general study na nagcompare yung yung uh, executor ng Filipinas pero may mga studies na rin na uh, specific uh, crop specific uh, for example sa rice talaga nagiging tayo sa rice we were once an exporter ng rice uh, pero ngayon ay talagang isa tayo sa top importer ng rice so uh, yun yung comparison na nakita natin ng mga studies is crop to crop um, yun, nababa tayo in terms of rice. Pero kung, kung, kung compare mo naman sa corn, so, I, I mean coconut, kung so compare mo naman sa banana, and uh, ang banana natin, umabot ng Middle East, kung so, coconut natin, isa tayo sa producer, then uh, dati, wala tayong production ng uh, oil pump, pero ngayon, wala ko na yung ating production. Uh, wala, um, masasabi natin sa ibang, sa ibang, crop ay talagang mababa tayo for example sa rice. Pero meron din ako naman uh, crops na talagang doon tayo na mamaya. So talagang i-recognize ang Pilipinas ay isa tayo sa mga producer na gano'n. But in general, um, yes, yung, ang, ang trend natin ay hindi walang walang pagbabago sa ating uh, policies and program. Talagang baka sa katagalan ay naiwan tayo uh, in terms of uh, yung ang sitting na natin na uh, na indicator ay sort and sort. So baka maiwan na kayo. So uh, may mga trend na rin na talagang naiiwan tayo but um, meron naman, may, meron kasing tinatawag na uh, crop advantage or competitive advantage. So, kung saan ka uh, mas advantage sa production, dun, dun ka mag-focus. So ibig sabi, not necessarily na uh, hindi tayo number one sa rice, ay talagang mababa na tayo. Dahil meron ko naman tayo yung produce ng mga high value. Thank you. Thank you po, Sir Nas. Um, wala na pong questions. If you don't have any questions, we shall proceed na po. Um, salamat, Sir Nas, and to those who share their thoughts in the open forum. We hope that we have all learned something from this ACP topic and have been inspired or challenged to use our talents and skills and get involved in programs and advocacies that would impact on people empowerment and social development. Let us now express our gratitude to Sir Nas Buisan for taking time to join us and share his expertise and insights. We would like to present the Certificate of Appreciation with the citation Office of Student Affairs at Ateneo Dinaga University presents this Certificate of Appreciation to Nasruddin Boysan in grateful, recognition of, in grateful recognition of his expertise and service as resource speaker in the alternative class program Tipid Tanium Challenge, Food Sustainability Through Urban Gardening, held on May 3, 2021. Given this 3rd of May 2021 at the Ateneo de Naga University, City of Naga, Philippines. Signed by Rodolfo S. V. Virtus Jr., Director of Student Affairs, Janet B. Badong Badilla, Executive Director for Mission and Identity, Dr. Alfredo C. Fabay, Vice President for Higher Education, and Father Roberto Ian e. Rivera, SJ University President. Once again, thank you, Sir Nas. Do you have any final note or message to our students, Pa? Yes, po. Uh, maraming salamat. At uh, uh, again, uh, in-encourage natin ang mga students na uh, actually, you can, you can, you can uh, make uh, great contributions to the community by just uh, being involved yourself in this na uh, social media tayo madala at least uh, okay lang social media minsan pero at least uh, meron tayong panahon na gardening at yung mundo sa farm at least bumabalik tayo sa, sa nature then uh, na-appreciate natin yung effort ng ating frontliners and people who are the farmers so mas malaking kasi ang sa panahon ngayon ng kabataan ay connected online um, uh, connected sa 
alam ang mga technologies na pwedeng gamitin sa farming and gardening. Kung kayo ay involved sa agriculture, mas malaki ang papel niyo. Plus, may nakikita natin ang farmers natin ay aging. So, malaki ang magiging papel natin. Kung, kung, kung alam nga naman, maghahanap uh, pa tayo ng workers outside the Philippines. Para lang sa so, maganda na although hindi natin tayo ni full time, at least um, may time tayo na uh, magtanim o mag-advocate ng magtatanim para din ito sa ating local food. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sir Nas. Everyone, let us all give a warm round of virtual applause to Sir Nas Boisan. <laughs> We now come to the end of this afternoon's webinar. But before we all leave the Zoom room, please be reminded to fill out the evaluation forms we posted in the Google Classroom. The certificate of attendance shall only be rewarded to those who accomplish the evaluation forms. Make sure that you input the correct spelling of your names on the evaluation form. Otherwise, your certificate's name shall be misspelled. We hope that you enjoyed this talk and gain insights and new learnings from the talk and conversation. Thank you for being with us in this alternative class program 2021. We still we are still in pandemic, so please stay home and take care, everyone. Just mabalos. Thank you, Sir Nas. Salamat po. Thank you.